welcome to Widowcast Podcast, where you learn how to find the strength to get through your journey and the skills to coach other widows. This is not your average grief group. This is your journey group. It just may show you the way to make something amazing come out of the emotional pain and trauma of widowhood. I'm your host, Joanne Philomena. I'm the best-selling author of Widowed and Widow Coach, and I'm a professional certified life coach. Let the healing and your personal journey begin. Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Episode 129. At least I hope it's 129. I may have just confused you all. (laughs) As I am doing this episode of the podcast, I am still in the hotel room. So if it sounds a little weird or echoey or anything, um, it's a temporary residence until I close on my new house and get to move in, which is going to happen in just a matter of days. Actually, closing on the house is just a matter of hours because it'll be tomorrow morning. So listen, probably by the time you're listening to this podcast, I'll be in my new house. And I'm real excited about that. Even though I won't have furniture for probably about five days to a week, (laughs) I will be sitting on the floor podcasting to you. But it'll be amazing to finally be in my house here near Waco. Um, I'm just thrilled with it all. So today I'm going to tackle kind of a heavy, heavy subject for us widows. But this is the one that I hear the most about. Probably it's the most devastating or what my clients would describe as the most devastating thing about being widowed. And that is the loneliness And here's the thing, and don't run from me screaming, but the truth is loneliness is not as serious as we think it is. I mean, I know a lot of you take this really seriously and and for you, it's a very big problem in your life right now, but it really doesn't have to be. So that's why I want to talk about that today. I want to help you out with this. This is a feeling that a lot of widows struggle with and always think that the way out of loneliness is to be around someone else or even have another partner in life. I know I hear from many, many, many of you who say, you know, I will never remarry again. My husband's waiting for me in heaven. But there are also widows I've talked to that kind of fell prey to falling into another relationship really quickly. And I think it's the vulnerability of that loneliness that makes that happen. But here's the thing. If being alone is what actually caused our loneliness, we would have been experiencing devastating loneliness even before our spouse died. Every time they went out the door, we would have immediately felt lonely. Or if we went off to do something by ourselves, we would have immediately run back into the house because of the instant loneliness. But that was not true, right? I'm sure it wasn't true for you. It wasn't true for me. The circumstance of being off by yourself did not create loneliness. Now that you're widowed, you're thinking of loneliness like it's a condition tied to your spouse being gone. You think loneliness is a circumstance all in and of itself. I just proved to you that it's not a circumstance beyond your control. We had moments just as alone as we are right now. Before our spouse died, we didn't feel lonely. Remember, circumstances are facts. They're completely neutral until you think a thought about them. So what's the difference between when your husband left for the day and you did not feel lonely or maybe even savored having the house all to yourself and now with your spouse gone, you are struggling daily with intense loneliness? You got it. It is what you are thinking about being alone. 
you're thinking about it very differently now than you did before your spouse died. And I hear what you're saying. I know it. I hear it right now. Here's what you're thinking or even saying aloud back to me on this podcast. (laughs) You're saying, but then I knew he was coming back. I knew I could always go home and connect with him. But those are thoughts. Those are the thoughts that made you not feel lonely when he left the house to go to work. They created how you felt then, just like different thoughts are creating the loneliness you're feeling now. See, we're treating this loneliness like it's a state of being that's just ongoing. It's like the kind of person we are, or it's just the kind of life we have now. It's a lonely life. But it isn't any of those things. And you're not a lonely person. You're not having a lonely time in your life now because you're widowed. You're not being lonely. You are feeling lonely. It's truly two different things. You're a person who's having thoughts that are creating a feeling, a that's a set of physical sensations in your body that you're calling loneliness. That's what emotion is. Emotion is the vibration down into our body from our thoughts. It's like a set of sensations in your body. And those sensations might be different from widow to widow. I think For me, loneliness is mostly a form of sadness. It feels really similar to me as the emotion of sadness. You know, it's that heaviness in my chest. It's just, you know, the tiredness that I feel that goes with that. It's kind of heavy and aching. Yours might be different and that's fine. So know that loneliness is a feeling It's not a state of being. It's not just the way you are. It's a set of physical sensations in your body that are coming from your brain because of the thoughts you're thinking, the story you're telling yourself. If you've been listening to this podcast for some time, following me on social media, reading my books, you've already learned that your feelings come from your thoughts. I've told you guys this over and over and over again, right? The story you tell yourself about something creates the feelings and emotions about it. And that's what causes loneliness, thoughts. And this is One of the places where I think we're most apt to get it wrong. We think that loneliness is caused by not having our spouses here with us anymore or not having friends around, right? Like friends dropping off the face of the earth. Isn't that now called ghosting? That's what happens to most of us when our spouse dies. Our friends immediately go into ghost mode right? Or you think it's because family members are not reaching out to you regularly. But the loneliness, it's not caused by any of that. It's a feeling caused by our thoughts. I think the most common thought we have that creates loneliness is, I'm alone now. It's pretty obvious, right? What's fascinating about loneliness is that people who are physically around other people can also feel alone. Many of us have probably at some point felt lonely, even in a room with other people, but we think that they don't understand us. We can't feel connected to them. How about, um, If you were this kid at school or you remember this kid at school, that's the kid who feels like the odd man out, feels like no one at school likes them. And I'm saying feels like, but the truth is they think that. They're thinking no one at school likes them. They're surrounded by other kids all in their own age group, yet they still feel lonely because of their thoughts about what those other kids are thinking about them. Or better stated, it's what they think the other kids think, right? We feel totally lonely because we're thinking we're alone. We feel totally lonely because we think so many of our thoughts with all by myself at the end, 
right? That's when I began to solve loneliness in my grief journey. When I started to notice my thoughts that ended with those three words, all by myself. Think about this. If you're in a romantic relationship where you're feeling alienated and ignored, have you ever experienced that? If not, yay for you. I've been there before. I've been in a romantic relationship where I was feeling alienated and ignored. And it felt extremely lonely, even though I was married to another person. It's all about the story in your mind about your relationship. If you have a story about rejection by your significant other, it feels like extreme loneliness. It feels painful. Lonely always feels painful. That's why I want you to learn this most important lesson. Let's get you out of emotional pain. I do encourage my students to fully experience all emotions in life, both the ones that feel great and the emotions that feel uncomfortable, right? We are not fated because we're widows to have to feel terrible all the time, right? But when we do start to feel terrible, we tend to want to resist it, which makes it go on and on and on because we're resisting it. That's why I encourage my students like really experience even the uncomfortable emotions. If you're feeling alone and lonely, sit there for a minute and, and think about where is it in your body? Where does it vibrate in your body? What does it feel like when you're feeling that emotion? It will begin to let you go through the emotion instead of resisting it and drawing it out. You know, there are studies that show how loneliness is a public health problem and it's rising because as, oh gosh, the generations coming up now are so tied into screen time and social media and always looking at their phone. So they are even more isolated, right? But usually these studies on loneliness and isolation are done on the elderly, the elderly who are alone in life and socially isolated. It shows that loneliness and social isolation are connected to health issues and even early death. And I don't doubt that one bit. I do believe that if you feel completely alone in life and isolated, yeah, your health is going to start declining. You're going to develop diseases. You're going to develop conditions and even cut years out of your life. But here's the problem with the study. It's showing what a problem loneliness and isolation are, but without delivering the obvious solution. It's not about changing their circumstances. Loneliness is not about being able to be with other people. Loneliness is about not being able to be alone with yourself. Did you get that? Let me say that one more time. Loneliness is about not being able to be alone with yourself. Being alone is not fatal. Think about it. Like there are spiritual retreats where people go into seclusion for long periods of time right? Even spiritual retreats where participants take an oath of silence. Not only are they being secluded from the world, but they're not even speaking to anyone for weeks or months. They are choosing to do this. It does not seem to have a significant impact on their health or lifespan. Actually, quite the opposite. I have a friend who goes off on these meditative retreats often and is in over 80 now and is remarkable in old age, right? Fit, sharp as a tack. So all that isolation and loneliness has definitely not affected longevity or health in that case. Living alone or living separately is not necessarily a bad thing and has not always been linked to feeling lonely or desperate or to it being a bad thing or a problem. So how can that be? I'll tell you, I teach all my clients about unconditional love. 
And the most important person on the planet for you to love unconditionally is yourself. When you love yourself and enjoy being with yourself, loneliness does not exist. We do not and actually should not depend on people outside of us for love and happiness. We can choose to feel love at any time. I teach how to do this. We can and should choose our own happiness. When you are choosing your own happiness, you no longer feel other people outside of you are hurting your feelings or that other people outside of yourself could make you unhappy. They're not responsible for making you happy, so they cannot make you unhappy. When we feel lonely and we try to get other people to solve it for us, just like we think we need other people to make us happy, we think we need other people to keep us from feeling lonely. And as soon as we're alone again, we'll feel lonely again because we've been relying on others for how we feel. It seems like that's the obvious solution for your loneliness, right? Like get out, get around other people. If other people did solve loneliness, if loneliness really was a problem that was created by lack of social interaction, then it would be simple for most people to deal with, right? You could just call a friend, you talk to strangers at the grocery store, you could message friends online to get together and go have coffee with, but that's not what I see happening. What I see happening in the widow community is even when widows do connect and commiserate, they're lonely together. But the truth is, most widows are sitting around, watching TV reruns, having some ice cream or chips. I teach all about buffering or tuning out on your emotions that way. The same thoughts that make you feel lonely are also the same thoughts that will prevent you from connecting to other people. If you don't like being alone with yourself, you're not going to connect to other people. Even if you do connect with other people, that's going to just be a temporary distraction from the stories you tell yourself about being alone right? You're going to connect with other people, then you're going to go home and your head is going to go right back into all those stories about being alone, coming home to an empty house. Exactly that. A coaching acquaintance of mine said this, and I really loved it. She said, if you don't like yourself and you don't like your life and you don't think that being with yourself is okay, then being with other people is not going to feel that great. And it's only going to be temporary. In other words, she, she is saying you need to like yourself and like your life and think it's okay to be with yourself. Then when you're around other people, they just enhance all of that for you, right? You're not trying to make them make bad things go away. Some widows make being alone mean something bad about them or something bad about their life. Widows think that is just how it is now. They're alone and destined to be lonely. Truth is, those are thoughts. It's that story that creates the emotion of lonely. Remember, loneliness is not who you are. It's not a condition that you have. It is how you are feeling. Square one. Notice how many times you tell yourself or even say aloud, all by myself or all alone. I made dinner all alone. I went to the beach all by myself. You can tag those little thought endings onto any thought and make yourself experience the emotion lonely. I went to the beach today. Sounds lovely. I went to the beach today all alone. Wow, there goes the loneliness, right? Sadness, depression. Watch out for those 
little taglines in your thoughts. Start noticing that. Why then do you often feel not lonely when you are with others? That's another thing I hear you thinking in your head. Like, there's times when I'm with other people, I don't feel lonely, and then I come home and I feel lonely. It's because your thinking temporarily changes, right? When you're with others, you're thinking that you are connecting and you're not alone. All by myself isn't coming into the equation. As soon as you go home to the empty house, you go back to your all alone story, right? The truth is, it's perfectly okay to experience the feeling of loneliness. It's okay. It's a feeling. You won't die from it if you allow it to be there. Right? You can allow it to be there and not make it a continuous stressful event by resisting it. That's when loneliness begins to deteriorate your health and your even your mental abilities is by resisting that feeling of loneliness so that it does become a continuous stressful event. It's not some horrible state of feeling. Again, it's just a feeling. And when you're ready to let go of lonely, you only need to begin to explore who you are and what you enjoy. You, just you. It's time to reconnect with yourself. You may have completely lost touch with what you like in life with all the years of being a couple, being a mom, right? You, you, when you make dinner, you're always thinking about, oh, this one won't eat the broccoli, so let's make a little green beans with this so they can have that. Suddenly, now you go to the grocery store and you wonder, what is it I like to eat? I had that experience right after Jim passed. I went to the grocery store and thought, wait, what do I want to feed myself? I was so used to cooking low carb for Jim because he was diabetic that all of a sudden it's like, okay, now I can make anything. I could have carbs again, <laughs> you know, but I had no idea what it was I wanted to fix. It took me some time after Jim had passed to reconnect with exactly what I like and to discover that I can really like being on my own. There are definite advantages to being alone, you guys. I always bring this one up, and it makes my classes laugh. But hey, I like not having to close the door when I run into the bathroom. If I'm in a hurry, I don't have to worry about it. It's just me. I can just run in that room and drop my drawers. No having to turn down your music or feeling guilty if it's music that no one else enjoys. Listen, crank up your tunes. If you live by yourself, you get to play your music. And unless you're in an apartment where someone else is going to bang on the other side of the wall, you can turn that stuff up as loud as you want. (laughs) <laughs> sometimes I'm listening to really loud music in my house and then I remember I wear hearing aids I'm a little bit hard of hearing then I remember I don't have my hearing aids in so I think oh god how loud is it really <laughs> my neighbor is mad and I run and put my hearing aids in but listen that's part of living on your own right you can like your own company Listen, I like hanging out with myself. When I'm alone, I'm hanging out with me. I get to watch whatever I want. I can cook or order exactly what I want. Listen, I have a passion for kimchi. It smells atrocious to anyone else not eating it. But now I can eat kimchi with no repercussions. It's just me and my kimchi bowl. When you're hanging out with someone else, and you're feeling connected to them, it's only caused by your own thoughts. It's not caused by the other person, right? If you're thinking, I just love being around her. She is so much fun and gets me completely. You're emotionally in a great place because you're thinking that. You can be around people who you choose to think you are so connected to and feel energized to be with. 
Or you can be around people who you think don't get you and you feel alone in the midst of them. Right? Because what causes loneliness? Altogether, friends, it's your thoughts. The thoughts that cause loneliness actually also make you less likely to go seek out other human beings because you've already decided you're alone. And the human brain will always work to prove its thoughts true. You will always get more of what you think. So if you think that you're alone, if you think that you're lonely and isolated, if you think you don't have any connections or that no one likes you, if you think no one wants to be around you, you're just going to make more of that come true. And you won't like being around yourself because who wants to be around someone that nobody likes? <laughs> right? If you're telling yourself this about yourself, this is why thought work and mindset is the most important thing that you can learn for yourself right? This is what life coaching does. At least the type of life coaching that I teach and do, it's causal coaching, meaning that it always goes back to the cause, which is your thinking. So the next time you're feeling lonely, ask your brain, how can you enjoy your own company? How can you connect to yourself? Right? I mean, literally, ask yourself that. Say it out loud. Say it to your brain. Like, what can I do to really enjoy being by myself here? Your brain will give you answers every time. It's the most fantastic computer we have sitting there on our shoulders. And what about the relationship you have with your husband? I still have a relationship with Jim. He's been dead four and a half years. I have a relationship with him still. I talk to him. I can sense what he would think or say in certain situations. And when I can feel that connection with him, even now, loneliness is not possible. And that's a product of the thoughts I'm choosing to think about Jim. It has nothing to do with what's going on around me. There are times that I listen to the news and I just smile to myself inwardly because I know exactly what Jim would be thinking about that thing on the news. It's like almost like not being alone, right? If you struggle with loneliness, get on the wait list to be notified when the subscription membership at widowcoachingcenter.com opens again to new members. Because in there, you're going to learn in depth about the connection between your thoughts and your feelings and how to experience those and even shift them. Any of the monthly lessons that you have questions about can be brought up on our monthly live coaching call with me. And you can even be coached directly on loneliness. Identifying your own thinking can be tricky. And I teach you what you need to do to begin changing your thinking and your beliefs. You'll learn how to implement all that I teach here in my podcast in your own life. So this week, don't be lonely or be lonely if you want. But just remember, it's always created by your thoughts. And it's even okay to let yourself fully experience how the emotion of lonely is feeling in your body. So get out there and enjoy some of your own company. Listen, if you're loving what you're learning in this podcast, you do need to get over there and check out the online membership website at widowcoachingcenter.com. This is the community and monthly teachings to help you move into a future life that you're excited to live. It's where you can get individual help applying all these concepts to your own life. You will, you're going to learn coaching tools. You'll learn tools that have not even been shared on this podcast that will blow your mind. And you get to hang out with other widows in the community and connect over all the thought work and emotions and intentional manifestation in your life. So check it out. I can't wait to see you there. As I said, when you go to widowcoachingcenter.com 
if it is anytime shortly after this podcast, it may have enrollment closed. You can click and get put on the wait list so that you will be one of the first to know when we open the doors on the membership again, and you can sign up for it. So check it out. If membership is open, you can go ahead and join and we'll get you set up. If you go there and it's closed, where it is closed right now, this is July 2019, you can get on the wait list so you will be one of the first people notified when I open the doors again on the membership. I can't wait to see you in there. So I will chatter at you again next week. Go find some joy in your day. Bye. Bye.